Thank you, Director. Great to see you here on the Hill again. Appreciate the work you and your team do to protect America's consumer, consumers, and uh, and frankly, to clarify the law as it exists. Uh, frankly, uh, one of the concerns that we've had in the structure that's been shared across the aisles is everything depends on who the director is. And, uh, and, and we really do need to change that structure as has been highlighted by a number of members. But frankly, the concern I had is the previous director uh, reflected poorly on our state of Ohio by uh, his practices, whether it was hiring practices or sue and settle schemes or frankly, ways to make companies settle even in spite of the law. So providing clarity, not just for the consumers, but for the businesses that are trying in, uh, in their best efforts to serve consumers. So thank you for that. I truly believe um, that, that a lot of it does go back to consumer education in terms of financial education. And uh, you can really see the difference that it makes. Uh, certainly compounding interest has changed the world. It changes the world for all sorts of people, whether that's working for good uh, to accumulate wealth over time or working for bad uh, to see people get on the wrong side of that debt. So appreciate your efforts there. I wanna highlight a couple things as you sit in a role that was created in a way to kind of sit over top of, um, you know, broadly things that are already uh, bad practices in every single state. So it's not like most of the things that I'm hearing people criticize you for here today aren't against the law in every state in the United States of America and attorneys generals are prosecuting people for the criminal activity there. And so systemically, as you look across the entire financial sector of the United States from the federal level, I'm just curious, what position are you in to assess um, a couple things? So when you look at things that can pass as a member of the minority, maybe we could study something, uh, something that's bipartisan. So when you look at faster payments and you look at fintech and all the uh, innovation that's out there and now the feds uh, newfound interest in, per, in uh, the fed itself taking a role in faster payments do you have a way to assess um, the transaction costs that consumers are paying just as a means of payment whether that's uh, credit card fees or processing fees money transmittal fees but all the ways that people would move money between one another how many fees are they paying I I can tell you, Congressman, that I can't, of course, answer that quite direct question at this particular moment, but the Atlantic Fed does do extensive uh, research and, and surveys on payments, and they, they kind of have the center of gravity on, on some of this research. So we have been working with them on making sure that we're looking at what's happening in this marketplace and understanding, again, the dynamics. Um, I, if I go too much further, I, I probably I may misspeak, but we can get back to you with some of the summaries of the research and what we've seen. Perfect. And one of the other areas that I think is a shared uh, sense of concern in Congress and across the United States is consumers' data. So we've, we've really failed in Congress, uh, in my opinion, to do our duty and provide uh, a data privacy uh, regulation, a standard that's really foundational, really, uh, to our, I mean, it's supposed to be there in a sense, uh, the right to privacy and the Fourth Amendment. Uh, but as times have changed, we haven't really updated it for the electronic era, for sure. And uh, we've seen companies that have collected and monetized lots of personally identifiable information and unfortunately sometimes compromise that data. Uh, so as you look at how we know companies have monetized the data, when that data is compromised, what are the impacts on consumers? Would you be in a position to assess that? So we, we have with respect to a couple of different enforcement actions, but I, I can say there are some uh, lines amongst the federal agencies over authorities in this space. For example, Congress explicitly took the GLBA safeguards uh, you know, out of the Bureau's purview. Uh, the Federal Trade Commission has that responsibility in addition with the prudential regulators. Uh, but I will say holistically, certainly, we are looking at what's happening in this space and, and we are certainly doing our part. Perhaps from the consumer's perspective. Yeah. So thank you for that. And then I think the last thing is just in the, the interest of the QM rule and the upcoming piece, you know, you're not yet into the rulemaking, but you're talking about going towards it. Certainly that says there are things that you have concerns about the rule as it is, exists today. And, you know, I guess what kinds of things are you and the staff there trying to balance as you look at a review of this, the interest, things that are broken and things that you want to safeguard and clarify? I, uh, well, 
that's a definitely a longer question probably that, that I can answer in a shorter period of time. I would say very clearly carrying out the, the law, there is a requirement to, to have an ability to repay and how that's determined. Thank you.